Michael Keaton is not only a fantastic, great actor, but is a, is a, is a beautiful human being. You know, I think that he had uh, the braveness and the boldness to really got naked physically, spiritually, intellectually, and have fun, you know, and laugh as, as all of us of, of ourselves. And, and he's such a self-assurance human being that he could really play with this material and navigate through drama and comedy uh, in a way that I have never seen or experienced. So it was, it was an extraordinary experience working with Michael. As we all know, I think comedy really comes from stretching the tragedy, you know, and I think all what happened to Regan, in a way, it's kind of tragic, but I think the way I wanted to approach was from, up, you know, upside down, you know what I mean? To reconcile, not with the events, because they are hard, but with the way we, he approached it, and I approach it, and the film approached it, so I think there's a certain energy and humor that come from that, and always it like that, I think life in a way, it can be uh, uh, tragically leave or, 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 or comically leave, depending how you approach the same event. This is our first feature, so I think loyal because we have met 20 years ago, we have met some short films and some commercials, but we always wanted to work in a feature film, so I think Chivo is, is one, of, one, of, one of a kind. I think Chivo is a genius, in a way. I think he really uh, technically couldn't be a better partner in crime for, for execute this film. You know, he's somebody who understands not only light, but movement and, 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 and great narrative. You know, in the way that when he takes the camera, uh, in, in a way, um, everything that is in front of it, it's in a way, at, you know, rich and, 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 and powerful. I don't think that is innovation, but I will say that it's a lot of secrets <laughs> that we put in that hopefully people will never be, but I think it's a kind of a magic trick that the film has, a, a, I hope, a, a, a special way to be perceived by, non, uh, by, a, li by a linear narrative, by, an, by, a, by a continuous shot, who, which I hope that my hope was to, to really get audiences in the in the point of view of the character and really live through his points of view and his mind and and put the audience in his shoes with a continuous flow of emotion and not being able to get out so I mean like really to get into the the desperate flow that he is going through in those walls and this corridors in these dressing rooms and not being able I want the people to really feel that because at the end of our life, it's, it's just a continuous shot. You know, we wake up in the morning, and then we are all day with a steady cam floating, and we don't escape. We don't have cut to New York raining and cut to... <laughs> no, we are trapped in our own reality. So that's the way we experience our life. So I want people to really experience the life of a person in a one continuous shot. And I, I want to have an emotional... Uh, narrative, uh, dramatic tension value in it. It's not only a visual thing, it's, 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 it's with the narrative purpose that I, that I really try and I hope that it works. I saw him as a, as, a, as a Don Quixote de la Mancha, you know, like dreaming with great adventures and just being hit again by this uh, uh, reality that confronts us with limitations, and I think uh, Regan Thompson, the character, embarked himself uh, in a journey of validation. He needs to be validated by the applause, by the people, by to have recognitions, to uh, feel, uh, you know, like feed me, you know, feel me, understand me, applause me. So the me journey, the ego journey, and. Uh, and when you go through that and you expose yourself and you empower people to have that power over you, you always have a disillusion. And so I think he, he questioned all the decisions that he has made in life and he's repeating patterns and he wants to leave that, that those patterns behind that come back from this character that is his ego talking to him. And uh, so I think that's the journey that he embarked himself. And there's something tragic and something funny 
and something very real and something very surreal about it. Every movement, every step, every turn of the face, everything is absolutely pre-decided. I, 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 I everything. There is nothing improvised. Everything was absolutely steady with the timing, with precision of a clock. And if it didn't happen like that, one little beat, a little late or after, as every joke, it, it's timing. It's like music. If there's a drum that is out of beat, it just screw the whole thing. So it was the awareness that everybody was intervening with the other one. So everybody was interdependent of the timing, the steps, and the camera, and who is in that moment, and why go into a close-up, why in the two-shot, why in this over the shoulder, which point of view, which one is important to be listening or be talking. So all those things, it, it went for me in a very beautiful process of exploration of what storytelling is and the essence of the most, um, for me, it was a great exercise as a director because sometimes when you cover things in a more conventional way, you do that homework a little later. You do kind of a homework before, but then later you do much more polish of things in the editing. Here I have to decide that, and all of them has to be aware where the camera will be in what moment. And <laughs> so what I'm saying is that um, in a funny way, uh, all what happened in camera it was pre-decided, but it was real.